Welcome to Life is Vertical. I'm Anthony. Today, we're going to talk about something that uh, I'm pretty excited about. As most of you know, Belgium is home to some of the most unique, most interesting, and some of the most exclusive beer styles on the planet. I can't think of any other country that has so many unique beer styles. Every like uh, different region, historical region, has at least one. The beer style I want to talk about today is uh, surprisingly one of the newer ones in the grand pantheon of Belgian beer styles, and that is the champagne-like beer style, the Brut beer. Basically, it is a beer style designed to uh, reflect and mimic the sparkling wines of the Champagne region of France. And surprisingly, it was uh, only invented around 2002, so uh, in the grand scheme of Belgian beer styles, it is an incredibly young style. But it has had a uh, rather interesting come up. In 2001, the Malheur and Bastille breweries both located in the village of Bougenhalt, started to brew beers utilizing this method de champenois. The kind of lateral thought process, the uh, idea to come up with it is rather surprising since both of them claim that they independently came up with the idea on their own volition. For the Bastille Brewery, it sounded like they wanted to come up with uh, just a beer that they could you know, serve for uh, menus and parties, special occasions, just uh, something utilizing a more sophisticated approach to brewing that, sh you know, the method de Champenois kind of provides. However, the Maurer Brewery, they uh, might have had a little bit more of an interesting story. So that's kind of the one I want to focus on here. According to legend, the idea actually stemmed from the late great beer author and uh, beer historian Michael Jackson. He stopped in their town and while he was uh, having a conversation with the owner of the Maurer Brewery, he was uh, like, what do you want to do with the future? What is the mark you want to make on the beer world? And he said he wanted to make some something champagne-like. And Michael Jackson said, well, why don't you? There was a little uh, apprehension, a little hesitation, because uh, the owner of the Maurer Brewery didn't know if there was actually going to be customers. They didn't know if there was going to be a market for a beer so uh, radical, so innovative. Michael Jackson put his mind at ease and said, no worries, I'm going to buy your entire first batch. Over the next year, Manu, the owner of Maurer, he would uh, travel across different sparkling wine regions, including going down to France to learn how to be able to produce traditional sparkling wine in the Champagne style. He would learn how to ferment under intense pressure, and he would also learn uh, and secure samples of traditional Champagne yeast. And it's that yeast that would be like the, the critical component, the key aspect of brewing this style, because it is like one of the only yeast strains out there that's able to ferment insanely dry, uh, not produce a whole lot of awful off taste, but also be able to uh, create the intense level of carbonation required to uh, recreate a sparkling dry champagne style beer. They would continue to push the innovation boundaries and continue to experiment in this new unprecedented beer style. And in 2002, both the Bastille and Maurer breweries would release their Beer de Brut. Now, the term Brut L has gotten a lot of attention in recent years thanks to the rise of the Brut IPA, which came around 2016-17 uh, that time period. However, the term brute itself actually stems from a long, long history of uh, wine production uh, all across France, Belgium, even Germany. You can find bottles of wine that have brute across the label, indicating that it is typically sparkling, but oftentimes incredibly dry. So on its surface, brute beer is kind of a rather simple concept, almost gimmicky in a way, really. It is a beer designed to be like champagne, as we've mentioned. <laughs> incredibly dry, very bubbly, high carbonation, a significant alcohol punch. All in all, that doesn't sound too unusual, uh, but I, I like to think what really helps define the style and set it apart and kind of shed that gimmicky shadow is the production method required to make a brute beer. 
because the Brut beer is one of those rare beer styles where it's defined just as much by its method of production as it is by its sensory profile and the overall drinking experience. So for starters, the average Brut beer is usually going to use kind of a base beer, right? Typically a uh, more blonde Belgian beer fermented with traditional Belgian yeast strain. So you do get a lot of phenolics. You do get a lot of esters in it. It has a distinct Belgian flavor, a distinct Belgian aroma. It is very familiar uh, on first taste. Once fermentation is complete with the base beer and the base yeast, it is then re-fermented utilizing champagne yeast to really drive home that champagne-like flavor. You are going to get a little vinousness to it. You are going to get that more refined alcohol taste. It is going to become a lot, lot drier. It cleans out incredibly well. And that is one of the most defining aspects of this style. But that's about where the typical beer aspect of this uh, style kind of ends and the more champagne method, the method de champenois. Champagne method. Méthode champenoise. The beers are then bottled in the champagne bottles with added sugar to reinvigorate the yeast and add excessive amounts of carbonic acid to help create that famous court popping fizz that champagne is famous for. The bottles are then stored on their sides for up to a year with periodic rotating to allow the secondary fermentation and maturation to complete before they are slowly tilted downwards to allow the sediment to flock to the bottom of the bottle. The neck of the beer is then frozen in order to remove the yeast and the sediment plug formed by the tilting. And finally, the bottle is topped with fresh wort to allow another round of fermentation before being ready to sell. The final product is an incredibly dry, fizzy beer that looks, tastes, and feels as close to actual champagne as a beer could possibly get. The wine yeast creates a vinous flavor and aroma akin to wine, but backed by the delicate, sweet barley touch. The hops are delicate and floral, but noticeable enough to remind you that you are drinking beer. The carbonation stings the tongue and the alcohol is definitely present, yet it is mature enough to avoid any fusel characters. And all the different brute beers, they all kind of have their own unique approach to it. This one, for example, actually has grape juice in it to really drive home that champagne approach to it. There are even dark versions, brown versions of the brute beer that uh, allow a wide range of experimentation amongst the style. But all of these different aspects and factors, they all play second fiddle to that overall process. It is that process that really drives home the concept. It is a beer designed to replicate the uh, champagnes of France. It's just beer. However, there was a little bit of a downside to the uh, foundation of this beer style. Uh, because it is closely replicating the champagne style for wine production, uh, it kind of got a little bit of a nickname amongst the media circus, calling it the champagne beer. But the problem is it's not from champagne, okay? Now, that might not sound like a big deal, but it actually caused a little bit of a legal dispute, especially for Manu, who ended up fighting against one of the uh, boards of directors in Champagne who kind of controlled all uh, artisanal products to include wine coming from Champagne. Champagne is a protected uh, region of product production, okay? Uh, it's protected by France, it's protected across the EU. That's why you can't have champagne unless it's from champagne. No other place can call it that. Luckily, Manu did not just simply roll over, but uh, the battle did rage for about five years before being settled out of court. And it was all based on the fact that Manu nor Bastille ever claimed it or even called it champagne beer. They called it Brut traditionnel. They called it uh, Brut beer. They called it any number of different things. But the word champagne was never actually attributed to it in any uh, official capacity, only in the media. And he couldn't be sued because his products didn't actually say or indicate in any way that it was from champagne. It was just using a shared method. Once that lawsuit was settled, things kind of opened up and the Brut Beer was allowed to continue to grow and expand. Now you'll see breweries all across Belgium releasing these uh, either regularly or on special occasions. Uh, there's breweries in Germany, there's breweries in Italy, there's breweries in America, all brewing Brut Beer. 
where I think it actually has gotten a little bit of a stronger foothold is actually in the American craft beer scene where uh, breweries, craft breweries do what you would expect them to do and take this style to its next logical leap, its next logical conclusion. Like in the case of this Back 40 Beer Company's Bama Mosa, they took the champagne beer style and they added orange juice to it and everything to be able to make uh, mimosas, right? I do worry that the American interpretations uh, might actually hurt or hinder the beer style from actually growing. And that's because uh, from the few examples I've been able to get my hands on, it doesn't seem like they're putting in the effort required to make it the way it should be. A lot of that traditional aspect of it is completely thrown out the wayside and just in favor of an incredibly dry beer fermented with champagne yeast, right? Uh, and then covered up with different adjuncts and everything. And I think that's because uh, if you just ferment a beer with champagne yeast, you're going to wind up with some very wonky flavors and off tastes and things of that nature, which I think could actually hinder the style from growing. The brute beer needs that long maturation. It needs that extended cellaring and aging process. It needs the refinement and care to handle something as volatile as champagne yeast to be able to create something that uh, not only reaches the intended desired result, but tastes good doing so. It's one of the few instances I can think of where the American adoption of a style might actually be to the overall detriment of the style. And for it being so young, I don't think most drinkers have a lot of experience with it. So some of their first interpretations might be lesser. So as far as I can think, the future of the Brut beer is a bit in question. All across the board, we have seen a rise in uh, a niche market where people are interested in beer-wine hybrids, and I think the Brute Beer could get its foot in the door that way, going up that avenue. It is a prime example of one of those beer styles that are great for both beer lovers and people who don't necessarily like beer but like wine a little bit more. This is a good bridging beer to those uh, consumer bases. But the only thing that would hold it back is subpar offerings. Unfortunately, only time will tell what the future truly holds for the brute beer style as a whole, but I do wish it well. Anyways, thank you for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something about this insanely fascinating beer style. It's such a simple concept on paper but uh, when it's done the right way, it is just absolutely amazing. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Remember, there's a story in every bottle and that life is brutal. Cheers.